What's going on guys, this is No Filter, a Nintendo podcast, and here's my review for Observer for Nintendo Switch. Observer is a dark, noir-style horror adventure game uh, on Nintendo Switch coming to us from Bloober Team, a Polish studio that um, has actually uh, developed a lot of other horror games like Layers of Fear, which I know a lot of people are, are uh, fans of. And yeah, Observer, I think, might be their best effort yet. Um, the atmosphere and the design and the attention to detail they have in this game is almost unmatched in video games nowadays. And for an indie team like this, it is incredibly impressive and it kind of it's kind of speaking directly to me because Blade Runner is one of my favorite and probably the best sci-fi um, movie, uh, movie series now with Blade Runner 2049 coming out it's probably one of the best out there ever made uh, just in terms of uh, core material and uh, how revolutionary a lot of its ideas were when it first came out and even in the how amazing the cinematography was and the writing and the music was in Blade Runner 2049. Those, those uh, movies were fantastic and this game captures so much of what made those movies great that this game is really something special, even if it is a tiny bit short, but hey, what do you expect from an adventure game? So in this game, you play Daniel Lazarski. Uh, he's actually um, a character played by Rutger Hauer, who was uh, formerly in the first Blade Runner movie, which is obviously wearing their inspiration uh, heavy on their uh, sleeves here. So it's uh, it's really amazing. His uh, performance is fantastic. And again, just like the whole game, incredibly well detailed and well performed. It's uh, really quite amazing. Um, in the game, again, you play as Daniel Lazarski. He is a an observer, basically a detective who can um, go into the minds of uh, different people just to see their past experiences, what they've done in their life, what they've seen, and uh, it uh, it can get pretty crazy and pretty tricky and loopy and can really mess with your head. But this world that you're in, in the Obser in Observer, is a uh, post-war world where all the superpowers have been wiped out. There are everybody seems to be augmented, and uh, everyone's trying to you know identify what is it to be human, essentially. Um, what is going on here? You know, there's a lot of different issues and conflicts, but the world's kind of getting run by this corporation known as Chiron now, and uh, there's been a lot of issues with them uh, kind of taking over people and uh, using body tech in different ways and being able to to control different people in certain ways and uh, yeah this world is very bleak but as a detective and observer you are trying to uh, fight crimes and in doing so you uncover different uh, mysteries and you get to see different residents throughout the game and, ex and experience their experiences through their eyes in in some cases and uh, it's uh, it's pretty striking because the visual effects they throw in this game are pretty amazing uh, again, I, I keep saying how great it is, but it really is impressive. I've never seen a game that uses visual effects in this way where you'll be walking in a straight line down a corner and all of a sudden everything that you're looking at just morphs into something new and all of a sudden you have to turn around and run back away because there's a, you know, a crazy enemy something attacking you at, from the front and you have to run away from them and it's, it really increased, it must have been their horror, um, experiences in the past with the past games, but it really creates a sense of tension throughout the entire game because you never know what could happen you know you could be in the mind of someone but it looks normal and then all of a sudden everything just goes to shit and it's it's really uh, masterfully done i've never seen a game do this quite like this before it's really impressive um but yeah so uh, the game essentially starts off with you daniel lazarski getting a call from your son and uh he's calling as a distress call and you need to go meet him somewhere and you find him and he has been decapitated and you have to find out who the killer is why they're there um, when you get to this uh little commune with a bunch of poor people uh, that are all augmented that turn to drugs to kind of appease them it's a very bleak setting again as i as i mentioned before but you're you're in there and you um again you have to try to find uh, who killed your son? Uh, why is he decapitated? Is he dead? What's going on here? Why would he get a call just to have all that happen? But essentially, you get there. There then is a lockdown um, for security reasons for every anyone who's augmented. You don't want they don't want to get basically um, like a plague that kind of runs through and destroys people who have been augmented. Uh, there's been issues with that uh, happening in the past in the game uh, world. So uh, they have a lockdown where everyone stays in their uh, apartments and they can't move. However, with you being an observer, you have different authority so you can move through and you find out that there's different uh, monsters and different uh, mysteries going on in this place as you're trying to solve the uh, the mystery of your uh, of your son's death it's 
really a uh, interesting story and will have you uh captured throughout the entire game um, i don't again i really don't want to jump into too much of it but there's uh, some stealth segments there's uh definitely horror aspects a lot of adventure game uh, you know there will be a lot of reading and writing um there uh, sorry a lot of reading but uh, everything is voice acted again very very well done every single person is voice acted um, it is all in first person, so it does make you feel like you are Daniel Lazarski. And uh, yeah, again, I, I think I've been, um, you know, just singing this game's praises for pretty much the entire time. A few of the things I would say are a little bit negative. Again, I beat it in about six hours. For an adventure game like this, that's kind of what you expect. And for a game this detailed, I think that's kind of fine. Like when you play, you can play a game like Call of Duty for six hours and get a, a, what you can out of it. But then you can play a cheaper game like this that has a more interesting story and a lot more detail uh, in, included. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely worth the uh, worth the price that it has for the amount of uh, content it has. Um, Another thing I would say that's kind of annoying, at least at the very start, is how slow you seem to move. I don't know if it's because of how detailed the environments are. They want to keep everything slow so it, nothing chugs along, but it, it is pretty smooth throughout the whole game. But yeah, it does seem a little bit slow. Even just turning around is a little slow. You don't really have a gun or anything to shoot people with. It's more stealth and other stuff like that anyway, but it's a little slow. I was, I was I would hope it'd be a little bit quicker than what it actually is, but it does feel good and you get used to it pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, really, that's all I can really think of is bad about it. I'm super happy I played through this. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, when I see a game like this that looks this good, I, I it reminds me of a lot of, there are some other uh, eShop games that look so good, but they don't turn out to be that great. But this is definitely uh, different than those. Uh, this is a really great game, and I'd highly recommend this to anybody out there who are interested in adventure games, and especially if you're interested in Blade Runner and sci-fi, because uh, yeah, this really captures it almost perfectly. But yeah, there it is, guys. There's my review for Observer for Nintendo Switch. I hope you guys enjoyed my review, and I will see you all next time.